Take a face of action. Green crew, skip across the holding sector and be sure. Admiral, we have enemy ships in sector 47. It's a trap. Thank you, Admiral Akbar, for your cogent analysis. Yes, it's a trap. Because today we are talking about traps. Not traps. <laughs> in the Admiral Lightbar sense, but the traps you find in your role-playing games. Be you playing Dungeons and Dragons, you're down some lair, some old tomb, or you're in RuneQuest, and you're exploring some forgotten ruins near Pavis, or it's called Cthulhu, and you've gone down to some subterranean warren full of non-Euclidean geometry and bizarreness. You will find obstacles. You will find mechanical devices designed to impede you, drain your resources, or extinguish you completely. And why do these things exist? These things exist because it is part of the genre. It is part of the heroic action genre. Conan faced traps, the Green Mouser and Farford faced traps. Um, Elric, Indiana Jones, Luke Skywalker, all these people, Buck Rogers, all of them faced traps, mechanical devices, contrivances to give them a hard day, and they overcame them through ingenuity and cunning. Because our adventure games seek to emulate those genres, then we have traps too, in the same way that we have thieves' guilds. Medieval cities have police forces. D&D worlds have owlbears. They are there, traps are there, because that is part of the genre. That is part of something which is expected in the genre, and so they are there. But what is a trap for? Well, a trap is to provide some sort of challenge or obstacle to your heroes, something they can overcome using wit and ingenuity. And we see this in the earlier modules of their lengthy, wordy, windy descriptions, included in all those descriptions of rooms and corridors were clues, clues that you were supposed to ferret out and realize, here be a hidden monster, here be a hidden magic item, well, here be a trap. And once you realise there was a trap, then you could take pains to find it, spot it, and overcome it again through description. If in the description of the room, of the corridor, you pick up that there are small gaps between the flagstones, then a cunning player could say, I examine the flagstones, this is why enough for a blade to come out of. And the would say, Oh, okay, yes, yes. Uh, well, I look for the trigger device, and do you might push back a roll, or ask you where you're looking, and you say, well, I figure it will be a pressure plate, so I check the flagstones around, see if there are any which could be a pressure plate, and you can probably either say, I'll be trying to make a roll, or say, yes, you can spot one's a pressure plate, at which point the entire body is, right, we don't step on that one, then. Or we cautiously prod, we cautiously prod that with our ten foot pole, wait for the blade to come out, and then stick something in it so it gets jammed. And that was how you were supposed to overcome traps. Again, spotting the clues, and then coming up with a plan to defeat them. Now, of course, in modern D and D, there are characters with trap detecting skills. These skills are there. Originally, they were there to provide a preternatural ability for the thief to spot a trap, even though the entire table had missed the clues. If they had picked up, maybe, wait a second, maybe there's something wrong about this room. I'm not sure where to look. I'll do my search for traps roll, <laughs> and then I can just find something. Almost uncanny sense to ferret out the trap. And then once then the gym will tell you if you were successful, then you got told what the trap was. You didn't have to ferret out their puzzle clue. That sense of finding traps has been lost. Nowadays, people are just reliant on the skill rolls alone, which is a bit of a loss for the entire game and genre. 
We're supposed to find traps. We're supposed to find traps because the GM, the Dungeon Master, the Keeper, Flame Tender is giving you clues. Clues that something is amiss, that something is wrong here. That there may indeed be a trap. So, GMs, you should put in clues that there is a trap. That something is amiss. That maybe this path isn't as well travelled as some others. Maybe this inviting, inviting looking way in isn't actually the way everyone goes in. And you can easily provide clues to that. Canny adventurers about to enter, well, anywhere, might stake it out, might think to stake it out first, see who comes and goes, and which way do they come and go. If for some reason they avoid the main entrance, or the obvious entrance, then maybe that obvious entrance is trapped. And there is a side entrance, which there's an actual, actual true entrance, which everyone uses. That's how you can spot it. That's how you can defeat the trap. Other traps are just accidents waiting to happen. After all, ruins, mines, forgotten places are often not well maintained. They're not kept up. The floor could collapse. The ceiling could collapse. The walls could fall in. Faulty wiring could shock you in a more technological setting. One of the areas in a spaceship is actually, that that area ahead of you is open to hard vacuum. Open the, open the, open, open the door, open the pressure door. You better be wearing a suit of some sort. <laughs> so there are hazards and they can classify as traps too. They're not intentionally laid. But they're far more encompassing in their in the ways that they're they're not going to be set in a place. They're not there's not going to be a way around them for the inhabitants to go around. They're just going to be some terrible, 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 terrible calamity. And again, as a gym, you should leave clues that maybe are ways for the party to find out. For it in a technological game, if you're exploring a space hulk in Warhammer 40k. You've been sent down by the local inquisitor to scour out the area. Then maybe you have some sort of pressure sensor or some sort of life sign reading. The other side seems to have an abnormally low pressure and no life signs at all, or no movement, no sound. Then maybe those are clues that <laughs> there's no air over there. <laughs> so again, clues uh, for deadfalls or you can speak of the, you know, how the, the mind, the, the shoring and the looks rotted and is old and there are cracks. Maybe there are cracks in the walls, maybe for a floor that's about to give way. Maybe it is old, maybe it is rotted. You can use these words, old, rotted, flimsy. So that the players know that here be a natural hazard that might just turn deadly on them so yes again with anything provide clues whether it is a made trap or a local hazard it's gonna you're going to want to provide clues to the players so that they can interact with your world and puzzle it out for themselves the thief detection ability the rogue detection ability or whatever is there as an extra preternatural ability to just ferret it out. Lastly, there is the concept of the lethality of traps. If you're playing some trap game like Dungeons and Dragons, there is often a mis mistaken assumption that traps just exist to whittle down hit points. Well, and this is ignoring one of the basic premises of the game, is that a normal human, a normal person, has about three hit points. I think they have five in the latest iteration, but the ones I was all useful, they used to, they had three hit points. So a trap which does 1d6 points of damage, like a dart trap or an arrow trap, stands a good chance of killing your average intruder, because your average person only has those three hit points. In a modern day D&D game, perhaps you want a trap doing 2d6 damage. That's probably going to kill most people. 
But heroes are of sterner stuff. They've got them bags of hit points. So that's why they survive the otherwise lethal trap. It's not because the traps are there to just whittle them down and cause them some inconvenience. It's that they would kill a normal person. So those have been some of my thoughts on traps. They exist there as part of a puzzle. Make them part of a puzzle. Don't just have them leap out and gribble people. That's what your monsters are for. Traps are there for the players to start paying attention to and paying attention to the environment, investigating their surroundings, and goddamn paying attention when you describe something. Thank you.